Well, I'm Dan. Huh. That's so weird, because... I'm Nick. Oh. Welcome, everybody. Good evening, Nick, and everybody else. Welcome, fans of the show. This is the Unpanderers, of course. Yeah. Unpanderers. www.unpanderers.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so... What would you uh, say we do here? Ooh, uh... Well, we are a couple of friends. We talk about anything. Anything that, you know, lights are fancy. And everything? And everything that goes off on a tangent. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Oh, tangents. Listen, if you're worried that you're not going to like this, you're going to hate it. So just stop listening. Unless you're into drama, conversation, <laughs> intrigue, and you're over 21. Or 18. Just 18. Yeah, there's a gray area. It is. Between 18 and 21, there's a, like a... Yeah, if you're not adult enough. But a lot of the opinions, uh, hearsay, uh, the things we say, I feel like I do this worse every time. Yeah, and they're not representative of the people our, around us. Our employers? Yep. All those our here friends. out do not pres- represent herein. Mm-hmm. All tales are probably fictionish, unless they're true. But we're not fictionary. Yep. Fictionary. They're all fictionary, folks. So we're gonna dive in. We're gonna give you a little something mm. right where you want it. Yep. And we're gonna give you just enough that you're smirking and you're smiling, just like us. First segment of the day. Can you believe it? We're already here. Yeah. Something, something to warm us up. Get a little topical. A little fresh. Uh, my newest tongue twister that I repeated a couple times before here. You like the, the Roman one? Yeah, I like that one. Roberta ran rings around the Roman ruins. 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 Well, it's not a tongue twister, I guess. It's too easy to say <laughs> that. It's, it is. It's not, as, uh, it's not as hard as Toy Boat. which is Toy Boat's the hardest one. Can you do it for us? Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. You start to sound, <laughs> you start sound like you're from the south. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. I, I got the south from that toy boat. Toy boat. I guess I could be British, British Southern. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, give it a shot yourselves, audience. Mm-hmm. If you can say it five times real fast, send a video in to us, and we will literally PayPal you 80 cents. Yeah. There's no way there's like millions of people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Local show bankrupt by toy boat phenomenon. Unpanderers liars. <laughs> <laughs> Unpanderers pandered at last. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, any smirker smile for you this week, Gorilla? Uh, I I do have a, quite a smile actually. Oh, quite a smile. Mine's short. I'll go first because you sounds like you got a big one. I don't. Know. I, I I can't follow a big it's one. It's just self enjoyment. As it's not really that big. <laughs> <laughs> so mine's a smirk. Uh. I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before I was getting gas in my car, and I'm one of those few jag-offs You're not who still a pays. No, no, geez, no. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, at a gas station. No. One of those few jag-offs who still pays with cashola, and I walk inside. Hmm. I have to pay before I fill up. Everyone else just swipes their damn card. You have to get so, like, I went in, and no one was there, and I was like, hello. And I felt like a jerk because, you know, I'm not, like... Five years ago, I would have just been like, let's steal all the money. <laughs> now, I'm like, I'm a responsible adult. I'm like, yeah. there's cameras everywhere. Don't be an idiot. Mm-hmm. And then I literally walked into the back in the garage, and I was like, hello? And the guy looked at me and looked away, and then he looked back, and he was like, you don't work. And I was like, I just want to buy gas. I just want to I just want to pay you guys for gas. <laughs> and the guy came in, and he looked he looked maybe my age, maybe a little younger. Like, I was thinking 25-ish. I don't know. He, he could have been 18. I, I, it's hard to tell with white people. <laughs> but he went so and I paid him cash and um, at the end he's like alright have a good day sir and I was like like you know how women say that like that bothers them if you yeah. say am or something no. it's like I'm not old well it hit me right then I was like sir dude I'm cool we're bros <laughs> and he was like like in his head I could hear him answering like yeah whatever sir <laughs> like, it was just weird I, I became old the other day I'm a sir. Happened one day, did it? Yeah, it did. Huh. I guess it happened. I'm old. It's a shame. Son of a bitch. 
I wanted to listen to rap music right in front of him and dance. Show him how cool I really was. Like that. Yeah, like, going. I'm gonna yeah, have to I was going to find a new dab. co-host. I can dab at him. Co-host. You know? <laughs> younger co-host. <laughs> just find that guest. He's station. going through. <laughs> He's the new co-host. Mm-hmm. I take my job, huh, you piece of shit? Yeah. Excuse my language. Excuse my language. Woo! <sighs> so that was a smirk at yourself for being old? It was a smirk at him for being wrong, but yeah, close enough. <laughs> Or where were you going? Um, my my smiles have been centered around like my new workplace. So my workplace has these bicycles, so you can get around campus, and they're just it's they, like you're Mr. Healthy Granola all of a sudden. You were smiling at water fountains and the beauty of nature here <laughs> last week. Now I'm you're also no longer bitter. Biking, what I mean, like Mr. Outdoorsman. God, God, <laughs> yeah. I, I apologize no, for doing yours. No, I, but I'm I mastermind schemes, so. Yes, it really yes. feels like they have these bikes everywhere, and every time you pick one up, it feels like you're stealing a bike. You have to like look around, and then it's well, not. Is it bike share program? Of some yeah, sort? it's like a bike share. But even... is there credit card attached or no? No, they're just there. Ooh, there's some of them labeled code. free. Yeah, and other ones are labeled for certain buildings. Hmm. Um, but essentially, whenever you pick up a bike, it's the same model of bike, essentially, but everyone's adjusted it differently, so it feels like you're riding a whole different bike every time. So there's that awkward, like, five seconds of, like, can I pedal yeah, this thing? How to, <laughs> figure out how to, how to ride a bike. Yeah, relive it every moment, every mm. time you jump on a new bike. Mm. So I was, like, scheming, how can I, like, keep the same bike? And I could lock it down, but I don't want to be a dick. Like, that, that'd that be a dick move. Um, This is a real thing. You could um physically mark it with a knife. That sounds terrible. No, 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 like, like real, if you got a pocket knife or something? Mm-hmm. You etch like a just like two lines on it near the somewhere near the handlebars ish. It's not enough that someone would return that. I do this with stuff all the time. I feel like yeah, but I'm it's off. not like marking it's your name. It's it's marking no. it. No, 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 no. So you would know. I, I, yeah, well, like, there's no way to guarantee. There's like a thousand that. bikes. <laughs> oh, okay. So once well, that good bike is cooler. gone, it's gone forever. Well, you could. I guess so. I guess you'd know it just by pedaling yeah. it. So. And this is, I always feel like I'm stealing it whenever I get on it. So it's kind of like the GTA of bikes. Oh. So if you saw somebody with your, your etched bike, you feel like you should run up to them because that's, like, that's your prized possession even though you don't own it. Knock them off the bike and then... <laughs> Triangle button. Mm-hmm. It's mine, bitch. So my scheme, mm-hmm. my scheme is at the beginning of the day, I park as far away as possible with a predestined mm-hmm. bike in that far corner that no one ever would go to because it's too far away. So every day, I take the bike from all the that other far bikes corner. Taken, all the other bikes get taken that are close to the building. Yeah. It makes sense to me. Exactly. So I take the bike to work, and then hopefully no one steals it while I'm working, and then take mm-hmm. it at the end of the day back to that spot. Could you buy a bike that's exactly like this bike? I feel like people would steal it. <laughs> <laughs> well do people have their own bikes or is it all like community biking it's community biking it's the weirdest thing I've ever heard of in my life I don't even know who you are Yeah, you're in some community bike program scheme it's... you're happy I don't like it it's just it's going in the podcast it's going between us yeah don't worry I'll get better later on just give me a week uh, that's fair hmm, interesting that's and it's interesting you did say uh, Grand Theft Auto and bicycle because in San Andreas, where you're CJ, uh-huh. um, if you did something long enough, you got skills in it, which made sense. You bike long enough, you jump far <laughs> enough, you stab it. Going off of ramps. The first thing I did in the game was just drive around on the bicycle, like the little ching, 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 ching. Mm-hmm. And I just biked everywhere and bunny hopped everywhere. To the point where um, I maxed out the bike and the bike abilities. So I could jump almost like 15 feet straight in the air. And I learned how to do kind of like stunts where you could bounce off buildings and like chain things and all. And what I would do is, uh, I'm still very famous for uh, my college roommate for this, is um, they would always say like sayings as you like did stuff randomly. Like your character, he just says things. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, oh, thanks for that money. And like, you know, like, well, that tell you to mess with me if you kick people and stuff. And I, I still think, um, what was the expression? I did like a 15 foot jump on a bicycle next to a car full with gangsters, and I had an Uzi, and I just went ding 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 ding. And I wasted the car to my right, just blowing everyone away. And he was like, 
thanks today. And then he said, blame society. And I drove off and did like a 15 foot thing. And to this day, Ben's always like, ding, 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 cool. Blame <laughs> society. <laughs> but like, it was just really funny that I, I also managed to get into secret areas that you couldn't get into because the bike hop was like such a, on a bike. Yeah, yeah, dude. I could just jump into the um, protected arm areas and it would get, give you five stars automatically. <laughs> oh man, I missed the bunny hop, man. Oh, a fifteen foot bunny hop. Uh, I like that all your friends are named Dan, so it sounds like you're a little insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan was like, yeah, and Dan was like, and Dan was like, yeah, I do have <laughs> my grade school Dan is like my best friend through grade school. He's a avid watcher of the podcast. I actually have a terrible story about him later. Huh. Can't hmm. But anyway, mom's the word. There's high school Dan. We're talking to him right now, gang. This is high school Dan. That's me. Can't believe it, this guy. He's my high school buddy. We like <laughs> kids so hard. Oh. <laughs> and then there's college Dan. He was my drinking buddy and my hockey buddy. He was. He, he is a mess. <laughs> I love you, Dan. Oh. Anyway, those are my three Dans. Like that's my that's my you know. It's like the Pep Boys logo, except with all our faces on it. <laughs> and maybe you're all kissing. I don't know. That's that maybe in your dreams. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, if you guys are kissing, I don't know. Um, real quick for the episode, actually. Oh yeah. Before we move on to the next area, corrections. Uh-huh. Here at the Unpanders, we pride ourselves in always being upfront and honest with you guys, and we did make a mistake in the last episode. Yeah. Um, we referred to him as. Harry Weinstein, Harry. molesting, raping all those women, prowling, predatory nature. Really disgusting stuff, folks. <laughs> Joke's on us. It's Harvey. <laughs> oh, man, we're so silly here. Oh, the wrong guy. The oh. unpanders like to denounce Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Weinstein. It's amazing Weinstein. how many people are coming out of the woodwork to say he did something to them. And it's... Like, the private this enterprise is, of Hollywood is just, like, denounced him immediately. Like, they already knew it, it. Grade school, Dan, was mentioning this to it. He's like, it bothers me. And I was like, why? Who cares? And he's like, well, it's like, now people are coming out against Ben Affleck because he squeezed this girl's butt. And I was like, who cares? Like, I, I get what he's saying. Like, mm-hmm. when something happens, people tend to pile on. People tend to speak up. It's like a, a fashionable thing, a trend uh, yeah. almost. They're starting to call and, out all these different celebrities. Right, like you said, come out of the woodwork, and to some extent, it's overkill. It's over the top, but I'm sure most of it's legitimate. You know what I mean? The part that bothers me is they must already know. Like the people who are the higher higher ups in Hollywood must already know he behaves like that. Because otherwise, why would you dismiss him? Does and my thing is, if someone told you that story three days ago and it broke in the news, would you go like, "Wow, that's surprising"? You'd have flashbacks of when he did that to you. No, no, I'm saying to you, a person who's not in Hollywood, were you surprised by this? That Holly, like, I could see certain producers yeah. and directors no, manipulating it. Yeah. I think they're, and, and listen, if they get caught, good on them, they're jag-offs. I hope they do get busted. You know what I mean? I don't get to do that stuff at my job, do I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, you want that? You want that toilet paper? Dance for it. Dance for it. <laughs> Throw a toilet paper at her. Oh, man. Like, like rolls of paper towels, which I do sell. <laughs> Uh, me and the the POTUS have something in common. It's called throwing paper towels at people. We do it well. <laughs> that was a terrible. Did it, like why does he think that's a good idea to show off his publicity? Publicity. Oh, I can't even say it because he's so horrible at it. Uh, publicity <sighs> skills by throwing paper at people. I mean, he shows up late. He he yeah. doesn't really want to get involved. He, he didn't really to to. help. So he was just like uh, oh, the long fade. This woman is not like, looking at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, she uh, man. Truly a leader among men, now I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Would you like to move on to uh, a few different things? Ooh, we got to uh, react to this. If you want to go to a scenario or a situation, and I do have I, one. I have one I for have you scenario. actually. Do you actually? We can What's trade. Scenario? We'll trade I'm gonna scenario. Start with mine. I'm going to start with mine. So, real life, you have five minutes of this thing happening. And Ooh. the five minutes is a cheat code that you could enable. Mm-hmm. So, like, what cheat code would you pick in real life to live for five minutes? 
mine's gonna be pretty boring. It's like invisible and rob a bank. Hmm. I think. I mean, I'd have to think about it a little longer. A little good. But but the money would be good for me. It would teach me values like hard work and uh, future planning. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, mean, uh, I could use them a lot. I mean, only because the other ones, it's five minutes. Five minutes of flying. You know, I'm like flying around enjoying the hell out of it. I mean, I did parachuting or whatever out of a plane. Mm-hmm. I fell for like four minutes and then I parachuted for like... 10 minutes so i kind of already had that and it was awesome but like you can do anything don't need that. Like, oh, really really you wouldn't want like invincibility i would but but for what five minutes yeah that's exactly i can't do anything like i'm also thinking i have a very grand theft auto mind today but am i gonna like take on the police force tanks <laughs> cops with tons of guns and just turn on my invincible for five minutes and then when it's over and they're still shooting like <laughs> Like, whew, we got that crazy son of a bitch. I mean, it's crazy. For five minutes, it was like he was invincible. <laughs> as soon as five minutes was up, he dropped like a sack of, sack of shit. <laughs> uh, like, I'd go down in history as a hell of a... Whew, that guy could that take some strange. bullets. He took some crazy bullets for he five had straight minutes. 200 rounds in his body. I've, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> and then what happened? Well, like a minute later, he died. He just dropped. <laughs> you know? Uh, what, what were you going to do with Invincible for five minutes? A boxing match? With I feel anyone? like you could, like... The problem is you'd have to save it for a moment where it's useful. Like, if, like, someone was in danger... Or accident or something? Yeah, like a, a burning building. You'd be a hero. And See, I, I also didn't think this was any power you want for five minutes on layaway. On layaway. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like really stretching it here. It's going to be five minutes and, like, half an hour head start. Uh, probably invisible, rob a bank, I don't know, or rob something with money. But, like, a Chico could also be, like, Armor a save. Car? Like, you could make a save point before you do something and then do that, and then you just go back to the original save point. So that five minutes doesn't count. To, would, would um go back in time five minutes? Yeah. But would it only be limited to five minutes, not, like, five days? Five minutes. Because it's a five-minute power, right? Okay. Yeah. So you could, like, be the worst match? enemy. Horse. Horse racing. That's true. See that? Those races last lot under five minutes. Well, From the monetary it. aspect? I'm always on. <clears throat> Listen. Five minutes of powers. Because you, you can't sleep with like 40 people in five minutes. Well, you could, right? You'd have to give yourself two powers. <laughs> 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 to be likable. And <laughs> a do-over. <laughs> uh, nice. Hmm. Whatever it is, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. No, I think it's all our work. The invisible thing? Um, I guess I had to do an armored car from like a super Wawa. That's like the best bet. If you were... Um, hmm. If you could just disappear from an armored truck after you stole it, that have all yeah. the cops around it, and you they'd, they'd bust into it, and then... Well, be no, 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 because no, the money bags aren't invisible. <laughs> stretching, stretching the rules. Stretching that too much. Anyway, I got one for you. All right. Um, you're alone in a public s- square. I don't know if this is a, like a local playground or something. Mm-hmm. Devil on your shoulder appears. He says, um, see that stupid kid over there? And you're like, I don't know. I didn't see a kid. You're looking and there's like, he's a kid. He's kind of fat. He's like four. He's like maybe five. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of fat. You get a million dollars if you let that kid drown. And you're like, drown? Jesus, I didn't even know there was... And you realize they're like, oh, there's a pool over there. And then the devil disappears. And it's guaranteed you're going to get the million bucks. All you have to do is walk away, look away. You do it? So you're not allowed to aid in any way. You're not allowed to tell somebody else. No, I mean, the kid's walking towards the pool now. No one else is around. That's why I said that. But you don't have to forcibly do anything to the kid. No, no. I mean, you don't have to go over and drown the kid. That's disgusting. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you just know he's going towards the water, and he's probably going to fall face first. And for some reason, he's going to drown. See, I could, and now you, you have awareness of that now. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that because I could see my own kid running that way. And if right. someone else were to take that choice, now what if, I'd want my <clears> five <throat> minutes of glory. What, what if the devil... <laughs> What if the devil said, hey, buddy, 10 minutes ago, you let a kid drown. You didn't even know it was happening. Here's a million bucks. You'd be like, welcome to I- hell. <laughs> no, no. Like, 
would you would you accept the money? I guess you're like, but I didn't know. Yeah, I had earphones in. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I mean, really, uh, that is knowing is the big difference then. Knowing you didn't do anything, around, or knowing that right. there's a deal. You didn't. You didn't do anything either way. Oh, I don't know. That's maybe that's part of the question. If I see so it knowing, happening, I gotta save the kid. No, no, that's fair. I'm feeling good nowadays. I'm not. You didn't know I. I said he's fat. <laughs> uh, gonna make it more enticing. Like the, kid, the kid just did he's something juicier. to your kid. He's ju- yeah, yeah, yeah. Permanently disabled did I mention, your kid. I mentioned the child is a huge racist Harvey Weinstein fan. Mm, <laughs> now what are you thinking? Huh? He's pro-Nazi and <laughs> is is conventional in every single way except those. And conventional, He's except for that. Such a bland this four year old is a Nazi. <laughs> I think that exists, actually, but that's okay. I'm sure it That's not does. okay, but for the kid, his sake. He'll survive. He's going to get it around. Anyway. I'm going to save him. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Ooh, that brings us to the next segment. Which segment, Dan? Celebrity Say it. Challenge. Celebrity Challenge! Oh, yeah. What? This is our favorite part of the show. I have one, but if you have one, I want to hear yours. No, no, Probably I, better. Yeah. You go ahead. You got it. Okay. Hey, Krista Flockhart and anyone from the Flock of Seagulls, I don't know. I couldn't figure out one name of anyone in that group, but if just one of you are watching this today, you're looking at me. You're looking into my soul. You're looking into Dan's soul over there. You're seeing this. I challenge you guys. I want you to find your charity strings, huh? You know what I'm saying? Put your money where your mouth is. And I want both of you to have a contest to shave us. Yeah. Shave us. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see one of them's going to shave you, one's going to shave me. And we'll see who does it better. Huh. Do they have to. How do they. I'm talking straight us. edge. Oh no, straight edge. That's fine. We'll find them. We'll find them to be shaved. They have to agree yeah. to shave us, and then this is how the challenge will go. <laughs> with a straight edge. Yeah. yeah. Like the old time barber style. Like the foam with you put it on with a little. What, what happened yeah. to her after Alec McBeal? Did she just. Uh, I, I don't know, but. I feel like she, she dated looked... like a random celebrity. Maybe some guy that was. Really like she was separate life. Like a Clooners. A, a, a George Clooners. You can say Clooney. We can't get arrested for saying George Clooney. <laughs> uh, I was watching a lot of BoJack Horseman. Mm. <laughs> you know? I don't watch. I don't oh, get it. You gotta. You gotta it, watch. I hear it's funny. It's good stuff. A lot of subtle. I don't even know. So cliches. depressing. Oh, okay. It's a mix of all of that. Okay. Okay. I've never seen it. I just know it's uh, what's his face, Will. Yeah, Will Arnett. Oh, Harrison Ford. That's who she dated. Really? Yeah. You know that? This is like our celebrity gossip hour. Interesting. Oh, wait, no. Wait, well, wait. I thought he was married, though. Maybe he was at the time. Oh. Hmm. You're saying, folks, we're not here to pander. We're here to tell you the goddamn truth. She's a little too skinny for me, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to offer the money. I'd rather her shave me and you get one of the guys from Flock and Seagulls. <laughs> We'll see which one. You know what I mean? How do you judge the competition, though? Better shave job? Most hair? Yeah. <laughs> Most <laughs> hair. <laughs> Whoever has the least amount of hair remaining on their body. Oh, it's a body challenge. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go full bore. I'm keeping this head hair. You know what I'm saying? Eyebrows. I won't do this. <laughs> She's straight edge in your eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. I might want the guitar player from a block of seagulls to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Maybe he's dexterous, you know? Her, she could have a drinking problem. Maybe she shakes. No, we're not saying she does, folks. We're not here to say that. But if she does, hmm. Shaving makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> she gets it close to your eyes. <laughs> I love it. Uh, All right. Well, that's our celebrity challenge, folks. Yeah. That's... If, if you know Krista, if you know anyone from Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> Make sure they find out. Because we're willing. We're we're there for you. Yeah, we don't have to be able because you'll be able. 
Um, before we get to the main topic, I know the main topic is a juicy one today. Mm-hmm. You just want to bite into it and give it the old... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, we did want to do the word of the day. Wow. Do you know what my word of the day is? <sighs> no, I don't. I don't know. Weird, what... because you introduced me to it. Oh, don't steal my word of the day. I hope you don't use oh, it. Is it? Go ahead. Go, I'd like to hear I was gonna. Today. I was gonna do two of them because I I Go misused ahead. invigorate and said en- enervate. Embarrassing. Which is the opposite of invigorate. Is enervate. Oh, it's the <laughs> it steals all your energy. I said one thing. I uh, meant the opposite. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys. Son is going to live. I mean, not live. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I used the wrong word. <laughs> yeah. I love those opposite words that kind of sound the same, like uh, emaciate. I always got that one wrong. With what? Emaciate. Uh, I don't know. I always thought it was like, <laughs> ma- emasculate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Emaciate. Well, they're both bad, so I don't know. Emasculate could be like you're you're strong and it's, manly. No, no. It's taking away your masculinity. Really? I got both of those wrong? Shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> they're both bad, but they can be different. Like, you can make fun of someone and emasculate them. I can be like, Dan, nice hair. You look like you never had sex with a girl. I don't know. That's a masculinity. <laughs> you can be like, you be like, really? You're like less of a man right now. I, I thought. I'll take a note of that like... later and address it in a future time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just have a list of notes and I'm just crying. Christoph Lugart, I want you to shave my entire head. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to win. And win your heart. <laughs> You're going to emaciate me. Mm-hmm. Oh, what was your other word though? Because this could be my word. Oh, that's I got four words in, so you're good. <laughs> Invigorate, okay. enervate, emaciate, and emasculate. It's like we wrote a book. Wow. Folks. I didn't even define them. Go ahead. <laughs> folks, my word is ferrite bead. Oh. You know why? You stole it. Yeah. I didn't steal it. I told you I got it from you. I guess I gave you knowledge, which is what <clears> known. It used to be syncopation. Ooh, syncopated. You know what that is? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It came up it in a Selena it. Gomez song. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> syn- anyway, syncopated is right. out of work. So, I wish I had one laying around, but um, the only one I have is at Dan's house and he's using it. So. <laughs> plugged in. Being used. I can't even. Anyway, it's like, you know the little skinny cord? Like, you're looking at a cord and you're like, this is a skinny little cord. And it's like, you know, it connects your stupid devices. <gasps> you got one? Oh, look at that, yes. that thing right there. I put it right in That's front of my face. Right folks. in front of my face. That's therapy. Nine out of ten stars from Young Panders. You know what it cuts down on? Listen. That high pitch whine you sometimes hear in our episodes. Yeah. Hear it anymore? That was my fault. We hope. We hope not. Anyway, the ferrite bead probably got rid of that sound. You're welcome, folks. We're constantly Probably improving here at the Impanders. Number one at the iTunes store. The Unpanders! Man, we're going to get laid a lot, man. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> hey, you're watching us. It's an expression. Yeah. Same with Dan. Yeah. Say it. You have to say babe. It's an expression. Yeah, it's an expression. Don't worry about it. We're we're good. Solid, babes. She's going to get me. Don't worry. <laughs> Ferrite bead. So, so you bend over and the girl oils you up, and the ferrite bead gets right here and stops the sound waves from yeah, making the this high pitched whine, which is about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All those electrical electrical resonances they they die inside. So. I mean, if you get used to it enough, it doesn't even bother you. Mm-mm. It's like the ferrite bead just walks in. You know what I mean? Nice and smooth. Evens things out. <clears throat> Would you like to get into some of our main topic of the night? Ah, oh, I, mean, I, I think I would. Up? I think I would. Would you like to? Wow. Let's do this together. Oh, I just have to slide. Ooh, yeah. Scroll wheel all the way down. Ooh. So I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you feel like your physicality? Life is best by. Yeah. Where's your physicality at? Is it at a maximum 
a peak? No, I'm trying to think though. I don't think it's that bad yet. Bad. I guess it probably peaked like three years ago, maybe four. I don't know. We're at mentally. I'm guessing. We're yet guessing. mentally. I want to say I peaked eight years ago, but I could peak again in two to four years. Okay, you're you're a double well, peak. Because, well, no, 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 because <clears throat> college really pushed my <laughs> mental faculties. But now in my everyday job, it's not really challenging me mentally, but I could see I'm not losing any mental edge. I'm just not using it. Hmm. Yeah, there's no, so there's no reason to use right. it. Right, and I think for the next three to four years, I couldn't see a problem with that. Now, be, down the road, I have no freaking clue. So our topic today is peak, peak human. human. When, that sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Which actually, if uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sidestep here. Go on, sidestep, tangent. please. I was reading about uh, lab-grown meat, and if human meat is grown in the lab, is it cannibalism? Yes. But cannibalism really implies that you're killing someone to eat them, and they're human. And uh, the meat that you're growing in a lab is not really human, and you're not really killing it. Well, here's my point, counterpoint. If you could make meat to taste like or be based of anything in a lab, like you're literally making it for consumption, why would you make it human? But how would There's you know? There. You'd have this one critic that has, has been a ca- cannibal. He'd be, like, he'd be tasting both. He'd be oh. swirling his wine. Now this is this this is really a debate that I feel like is silly because I feel like I know, but I don't. You would know if it's human meat, wouldn't you? What if they're trying to grow a human organ, like a heart, and they're like, "Well, we messed up. This we up. made a whole bunch of arms. Just chuck it in with yeah, the, the sausage. Arms, the thighs, thighs, thighs. <laughs> Ooh, thighs. Meaty succulent thighs. Hmm." That's succulents. I just imagine Raquel Welsh from <laughs> Shawshank Trek Redemption, that poster. Uh-huh. If she was yeah. grown in a lab... No, I'm not going to finish you, that. <laughs> you, know, you would still eat it? Yeah. You'd have sex with her, yeah, maybe. But. Thank God cannibalism isn't legal because you'd be like... Like, like different would, parts of real celebrities. Is cannibalism illegal? If you were to freely, I don't know. Can you freely give parts of yourself to be eaten? I, don't I have no idea because you can't mess with a corpse. It has nothing to do with cannibalism. Well, like, like, you, you know could I mean? survive without chunks. Like they could take chunks out of you. Can they? Like your liver would be gross. So it would be like foie gras, Dan. <laughs> I think that's a corpse thing. Like there's a law with corpses. You can't do certain things with them. You can't tie them to the roof of your car and drive around town. Woo! <laughs> let's look at it. Look at the Bernie's Bernie's day out, Bernie's weekend. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at this in the future episode. So let's go Break back. Break it to, down for the post. Yeah. All right, okay. Let's, let's go back. Let's though. go back Keep to peak human. human. I had to. Keep I had human. to sidestep. I read that article today, and I was just like, hmm, "That's interesting." What did you get for um, peak human reaction time? Because <clears throat> there's like numbers go up and down, but they're all in a range. Do you, Do you have stats on this? I hope you have stats. No, no, I just, I just, I looked at one exact website uh, that had twenty-four as the highest with your reaction time. Is the, the quickest, great. like one of the? I've seen those things that uh, NHL players use. They have like a board and they have little things that light up, and they're supposed to smack it. And I've seen like Giroud do it, and it's fantastically fast. So I could 20. see twenty-four seems reasonable. I feel like I'm slower than that. Well, then they broke it down to two segments. I'm getting most of this from a Reddit uh, page, so it's 100% fact. Sure. There are two kinds of reaction time, simple reaction time and choice reaction time. Like, a, so most, like it doesn't get to your brain before you make a, a decision? Like when you touch other a way, stove. Other, other way around. Simple reaction time is literally just the nerves. Yep. What you see gets to your brain. What you feel gets to your brain. What you smell gets to your brain. Then there's a time between your brain getting it, and then your brain has to decide what to do with it. So your brain says, I'm going to move my damn hand. Or your brain says, you know what? That smells awful. I'm going to turn to the left. Like whatever your brain wants to say. Your brain has to do something. I don't even think it gets to your decision. brain. I think it gets to like your central nervous system, and it's like... Well, a hot no stove does... Jesus Christ. Yep, now we're parsing. <laughs> yes, just clarifying. certain reactions... To, to keep the body safe from harm, pain, heat, and certain real extreme ones don't even make it all the way to the brain. They stop like at 
there must be cutoffs. You know, you have a cutoff man in baseball. It's like your cutoff man in the nervous system. Hmm. So you get halfway there, and it's like heat. Yeah, pull your goddamn arm. So away. I don't think that changes over time. I think that stays the same. <clears throat> Actually, that can change too. That's wow. simple reaction time can change, and it gets slower, slower. with age. Huh. Might not be much slower, but the interesting thing is choice reaction time, where you oh, decide what to do with the information. It was probably more important. Well, for a while, me and my college Dan friend not this guy, were really depressed because apparently like 22, 21 is like when you're a peak for video games too. Like, oh, no. Yeah, like like Koreans and stuff playing, um, Jesus Christ, why can't I remember? Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, yep. Like the best ones in the world are like 22, 23. Like once you're like 28, like they don't let them play. Like you're out of the league and stuff like that. And it's like, damn. I'm too old to play video games. Fast well, well, Twitch. well, folks. Oh, boy. Yes. I like this. They were just measuring fast twitch, which you just said, like the quick, yeah. simple reaction time. Mm -hmm. Guess what, bitches? Choice <laughs> reaction time is at its peak at just under 30. So, like, between 29 and 30. So, you're already Boom! past your prime. So, I'm already past my prime, but not by eight years. Huh. Only by one and a half, two-ish. Three-ish. I've got all that. Why did you touch on that? Oh, God. That was, that was Bring a us around. That was a missing hole in my research here. Was it? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So I was really looking at, like, uh, physical <clears throat> exertion. Right, which is important. It's very important, but it's not the whole story. And there's, yeah, there's, like, the almost fast twitch. There's sprinting, and there's marathon runners. So I look mm. between the difference. And there's did you? What was the difference? There's definitely a decline in performance when uh, a marathon runner hits their late 20s. But a okay. sprinter, their shortest distance under like Olympic world records is mm -hmm. twenty three to thirty one. So there's a plateau there that's actually later than I thought because most people say that your your peaks in your 18, early twenties. Yeah, right, twenty two, yeah. whatever. Hmm. And the world record average age is twenty six for speed. Oh for speed, okay. For runners in general or for runners in general. But okay. these are okay. sprinters. Mm -hmm. And swimming, the the world records are all around twenty one. So, like, the swimming is kind of like the, I would say it's like the peak sport for using all your muscles. Right, so you're using more. Mm -hmm. So it's very muscle-based, less yeah. brain-based. Yeah, because we know a lot of swimmers that are just oh, rocks. Oh, yeah. We mean the rock-hard abs. abs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's <laughs> one iron a shirt on that puppy. <laughs> mm, yeah. So that's kind of... That's kind of interesting. So if I were to pick up a sport now, it wouldn't be swimming because I'm already way past my prime. But it would make me healthier. It would. And then sprinting and running, they're a little too boring, I guess. I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going with this because I came across the same number you did in this next oh, one. Oh, you did. And it's, you actually just passed the prime, I believe. Oh. Just. For what? Right? Yeah. Yeah, a mental game maybe. Oh yeah, mental game. Go ahead. So which bring mental... it down for the folks. So I'm gonna go for I'm gonna switch it all the way to pure mental game, which is supposed to be chess. This is, gonna, okay. this is a different you know, article, oh. I think. No, no, there's a reason. Oh, okay. So I saw you wrote down what, what was the number you had? Uh, thirty-one point four. <laughs> I love the point four. Yeah. Um, Some article really specific. Was was my my article was a different article than yours. I got Business Insider, I think. Uh huh. But Business Insider had a list of all the um, what you peak at in your age and the the thing in question. That's convenient. So, which was interesting because you wrote down thirty one point four was for chess, and I thought, what the hell, arbitrary number. Yeah. Well, guess what Business Insider said? At age thirty one, you peak at chess. And I was like, <laughs> oh, damn, maybe you do, huh. or maybe they stole the exact same information. I we don't know, but. Well, if you think about chess, you're analyzing all possible moves in a time frame, and the way they do professional chess is they do, they hit that clock. So do you know what the time is at? What is it supposed to be? Two minutes? I just you have a block of time, and when you hit the clock, you're oh, you're time eating starts, your block. And you're eating okay. in your block. Yeah. So I think if you go over the time, I don't, I don't get know penalized or something. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a correction on this, but no, we won't. We're probably just, right. Yeah, it's just the neural connections and moving fast through all your options. That starts mm -hmm. to peak at a younger age than we are at now. Which kind of sucks. Kind of does, but hold on. So, um, 
the Business Insider article I thought was pretty cool because it visualized. Um, it was just one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six. There's eight. a lot of yeah. nice yeah. graphics. I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight yeah. Sporting Intelligence and SB Nation and Quant Quant Hockey, which is gonna come up next. Hmm. Well, let me do this. You son of a gun. <laughs> um, <clears throat> a few things I thought were interesting was new language learned. Oh. You peak at age seven. Wow, so you, you well, have a harder after, time learning new languages after saying? And my theory is from the very first episode of the Unpanders, we talked on how do you think in language, right? Mm-hmm. And if by age seven you have your whole language pretty much down pat, your original language, now you're thinking in that, in that language, which makes it harder to what? Learn a new language because you're thinking in a different language, Right. I'm curious if it's like learning multiple languages at a young age confuses you later in life. I don't think so. I think it's usually a good thing. You understand different ways to analyze things? Oh, I've been, yeah, I've been cursing at my kid in Spanish, German, uh, <laughs> it's Puerto Rican a language. Nine, nine, I've been nine, cursing nine. at Yeah. <laughs> That's just the word no. We're going to go with a few choice words. Choice crap. words. Um, this one's interesting. In that same article, uh, do you know when you peek at remembering names? <laughs> I was always terrible at this, so... Well, guess what? 22. We're not going to get any better. <laughs> How about bone mass? It peaks at a certain age. Bone mass. We just crested it a couple years ago. I thought late 20. 30. 30, really? No, 30. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Your body's still... You start losing muscle and bone and all sorts of important stuff. I can't even remember uh, it all. Muscle, muscle peak was around 26, 27, but bone was 30. Um... This one's good. Remembering faces. When you get, you're the best at it at this age. Point pick the 32. Age. 32? Yeah. I don't, I'm not going to remember everybody's faces anymore. Well, it doesn't matter. You don't remember their names. <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. hey. Get out of oh here. You yeah. son of a gun. Um, <clears throat> chances of winning a Nobel Prize go down after this age. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to pause Four you right here. Zero. Four zero. Okay. 40. I'm thinking, 40. like, I'm wondering what the stats are for people who get married before they're 32 and after they're 32. Like, do does the percentage dramatically change if you can't remember their their face or their name? <laughs> you remember your significant other's name and face, I believe. It takes a little more effort. <laughs> so so for, arithmetic maxes at 50. Check that uh, one out. I think I had that stat somewhere in there. Um, last two. Vocabulary maxes at 71. Hell yeah. That's part of like worldly knowledge. Right, because you keep getting smarter until, <clears throat> my guess is at 71, you just start getting stupider. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. For all our 72-year-old viewers and beyond. Yeah. But that might be societal and career-wise. You're done interacting I'm with I'm sure people. it is. I mean, you can get different diseases and brain damage by like 50 and 60. So yeah, you got to exclude all. all the people that are mentally off or will be because you don't really... Anyway, <clears throat> go ahead. Bring us to our next area in peak human. So I was going to go to baseball. So the baseball peak, which is a, a sport which mostly relies on, I guess... I, I, it's scenario and uh, it's... I say down in distance. That's a football term, but it's, more, it's a thinking game. Yeah, it's, it's more, cerebral. Exactly. It's knowing how, I guess most of it's like hitting a ball, which is more mm -hmm. mental than anything. It's not really reactionary. I think it's You know what they say about baseball? The, um, the most important element to hitting a ball in general no. is vision. It's vision. Hmm. Like 100%. Once your vision goes, you're screwed. It has nothing to do with arm strength, uh, predictability. I mean, it helps being predictable, but your visual, you're trying to pick up cues from, I guess, his hand, the pitcher, as you can see it. The spin of the ball, because you can kind of see which way the reds are going, whether it's this way or this way or this way or this way. Yep. And from there, you kind of memorize which way is that usually cut in, is that usually cut out, does this one look like it's kind of up higher than they usually are? It's it's very hand eye -y. Hmm. Because, I mean, you have, like, what, did they say it's, like, less than a two seconds to decide if you're going to swing or not, which yeah. is ridiculous. And, uh... That's insane. And then you have to swing and hit it. I'm going to say <laughs> one, one of our uh, our English teacher, uh, Mr. Mollusk. Ah, yeah, would, uh, Mollusk. Old fish he man. would say the hardest thing in sports is to hit a baseball. Which probably I probably is. 
I think, like, if you were to somehow determine a scenario where you had to do this one thing. <laughs> Both at, like, 90, right? Yeah. Your bat swings around 100 mile an hour, 90 mile an hour, and the ball's moving at 80, 90, 100, so. And I'm guessing, like, when's your, I don't know when your vision is peak, because you can now manipulate it. Well, that's what, um, did you know that's what steroids really help you with? So that you can increase your eye muscles? No, no, no. It helps your it helps you focus and visualize. Ah, huh. That's why the steroid era was fraught with so many homers and et cetera, et cetera. It was very. It helped their muscles. I mean, it helped their arms and their, you know, biceps. Those big, meaty man biceps. Mm-hmm. But uh, but it very, very much actually improved their vision. Huh. Like heightened their sense of vision, which is you know, makes sense, right? Yes, as they're squeezing all the blood out of their arms and legs into their eyes. <laughs> their eyes are looking every which way <laughs> muscle eyes <laughs> they drop yeah. a juice on for home plate <laughs> uh, so mm-hmm. some of the best most interesting stats came from quant mm-hmm. hockey mm-hmm. and it, it all had to do with NHL stuff because they actually broke down like 5 on 5 points your peak age what do you think your peak sure. age is I saw this and I don't remember so I'm going to say 27 25. Ah, that's close. So okay. there's, there's a bit of a plateau. So 25 until 30. But mostly at 25. It's a little, little hill. And then, it so it kind of breaks down into like, when do you retire from the NHL? And that's hmm. like forwards, defensemen, and goalies. They had stats for each yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, which... And this is probably people who don't, like, they kind of are floaters in the NHL too. So it probably brings down sure. the age. Sure, So forwards is 24. I knew it was. Wait, retire? For retirement, forwards. Forwards are. Oh, I guess, yeah, yeah, because you have, and you also have the most forwards. So yeah. the most people retire. Right, right, right. Okay, that makes Probably, sense. too. And you're, 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 you're counting on production. You're not counting on something that's a little right. bit Right. Defenseman harder to doesn't have to. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And then D is 24 to 32. So there's a plateau. Like mm-hmm. the, uh, the forward one was like really a sharp decline in curve. So there was a definite peak. But the D, because I was just nice and flat. It was like, Wee. yeah, and then goalies. Who who gives a shit about goalies? I want to know because <laughs> it it was all over the place. You have like a Tim Thomas really? who was like forty. Interesting. Like it it seems like that would be the most reaction based vision. I think again that one goes to vision. Yeah, so maybe <laughs> it's it doesn't have anything to do with reacting to Age things. It's reaction. just being well. In I mean, it, I would imagine it's both. It could be reading the play and understanding like what the best option for the other team is and positioning yourself hmm. accordingly. And mo- probably yeah. luck in your defenseman, too. Right. Yeah, 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 your team strategy, a little bit of luck, defenseman, positioning, everything. Hmm. Plus there's fewer of them, so it's like you can't really switch goalies mm-hmm. too quickly. Interesting you brought up hockey because for my father's birthday, guess where I'm taking him tomorrow. Hmm. Oh, nice. Awesome. They had a huge win. Eight goals. Eight, eight goals, so I predict we will see a one nothing shootout loss. <laughs> yeah. Because they spent all eight goals uh, in Should one. Have Should have saved it for later. We'll see. <clears throat> I wonder what I'm the average team age of Flyers is. It's probably pretty young. It seems like it's really young. Maybe you hope 24, maybe? Drop, drop AMAC, drop uh, one more. I don't even know who, but then you probably really drop the whole age bracket. A good yeah. amount. Hmm. Who we get to watch? Huh. So, not to get off topic, but a a topic that occurred because of this topic. Yeah. Can I get into it? Yeah, go ahead. So, if you type in peak human condition and species, you get an interesting result. Like peak across all species. Please tell me there's like... That's what I thought. Oh, I thought there were... That's what I was looking wallabies. for. I was, look, I was looking for it. <laughs> anyway, um, I couldn't find that. I was. Google. There's, there's something called peak... That's what I used. Google. What do you think I used? No, keep going. Yahoo? Okay. Dogpile? <laughs> yeah. Spider 27? <laughs> I'm trying to think of some old search engines. Jeeves. Ask so. Jeeves. <laughs> do you remember the ones that were like mama. real early Your on? Your mama. Your mama. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, what, Lycos? So many Lycos. <laughs> well, that's dog pile, I think. Oh, same same thing. Oh. There's one called like 12 spiders or something. It cracked me up. 17 yeah. 
So anyway, and they all gave you <clears throat> shit results except for actually they all, they all did crap back then. Right, 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 right. Well, peak human condition is um, would all the all the fictional characters that are like superheroes, that's what they all have. So it's it's a condition where your body doesn't age normally. It runs on peak efficiency. It never gets sick. It's it's stronger than the average human, but you would never consider it superhuman strength. So they try to cast people that look like they're this age. No, 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 no. no. It's not. It's not. No, in the superhero themselves, in their lore, has this condition. Oh, okay. So I'll give you an example. A few people. Conan the Barbarian is considered peak human condition because he's not superhumanly strong. He's humanly strong. Um, Liquid Snake. All the people in the Watchmen, Xena, the Warrior Princess, the Ninja Turtles, are considered peak human condition. The like main character from Doom, Mario, Batman, Wolverine, Liquid Snake, Lara Croft. The list goes on and on. But it's essentially like anyone who's a superhero, and it isn't their superpower. Like someone who's super super strong who lifts like buildings. Like that's not peak human. That's weird. But like all but those like, people are like in their twenties. Like I visualize them and I see but they, them as but young. But they are for decades, aren't they? Like, do you know what I mean? They continue on at even that in age. their story, right? And that's the whole idea behind it is that somehow their cells don't age like ours, and somehow their um their muscles work at a hundred percent. So they don't only have to be working out; their muscles just work at a hundred percent. It was a whole series of articles that had to do with Marvel and DC and all this other stuff, and I was like. It's not what I'm looking for, <laughs> but it, it but it interested me. I was like, oh, so that's the old peak human condition, you know? Yeah, and I guess I would counter with Wolverine being really old. Um, he is, but he stays young, like for decades. You yeah, know what I mean? He's true. Is he like 400 by the time he finally is old? Do you know what I mean? I think he is. Right. So he's been around for since. Yeah, since the like Soviets. Centuries, yeah. Summer. Yeah, I don't know. But how does he stay young? He doesn't have, like, age-defying powers. He just, his body works at a level that's, like, 100%. His adrenaline is stronger. His, he never gets sick. He doesn't age quite the same. He's, his muscles burn at 100%. He, his senses are always pushed to the limits. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But this is with a lot of these characters. Yeah, I cracked up at Mario. I was I'm like, Mario? Mario? And they're like, yeah, because he can keep retaining his health going all day. And he doesn't stop. Doing he, what? Jumping on mushrooms. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Either way, that was really weird. And none of the, if you've watched like the Luigi and Mario series, like none of those guys are healthy. Any, actually, no, any of the goodness. depictions of Mario. Well, because there's a, that's an interesting thing because he's um, the allure a fat Italian plumber with a funky <laughs> mustache. You know what I mean? Like what? You have to keep casting him as that, but he's <laughs> peak human, <laughs> the old fat Italian. Huh? Yeah. Um, speaking of fat Italian, I'd like to bring something of notice to this podcast. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I made my first Italian meal tonight. Uh, I've never made any of the two ingredients. You ready? Yeah, hit me. I bought a big old juicy pork butt. Right. Uh-huh. I bought a big old fresh thing of broccoli rob. Uh huh. Yeah. And I cooked them. <laughs> I never did that. So you heated I was them at, up. Yeah, but you got to prep them differently, and I've never done it. And like, you got to cook down the broccoli rob, and I made like this special baste and like paste for the um for the pork butt. I'd never done this before. Oh. So I winged it. What I do when I wing it, especially cooking, is I um I read four quick recipes offline, and I combine all four into one. <laughs> so like it's like, one was like four hours at three hundred twenty five degrees. One was like three hours at three hundred thirty degrees. One was like uh, five hours at two hundred eighty degrees. And I'm like, that's like three and a half hours at two ninety five ish, you know. And I kind of just I wing it all together. And it, it was like, I did good. I used uh. Like all these cloves of garlic, friggin', I, I busted open a Corona and poured it all over that bitch. I was like, Shh. Corona. I did, uh, oh yeah, Corona, dude, you got a beer base a little bit. <laughs> Gotta get that. And then I put a bunch of the uh, 
garlic cloves in a blender. I did olive oil. I did Worcestershire sauce. Have you ever done Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce? Yep. Oh, yeah, man. So what was your woman's reaction? You did what? Because I never made this before. I usually just stick to, like, grilling burgers huh? or chicken. Yeah. And she's like, okay. And then the broccoli rob, I I just, like, read how you can break it down. I didn't blanch it. I think I should have blanched it, really. But Well, the blanching, it will make it softer. Oh, interesting. But uh, lots of garlic, olive oil with that bad boy, a little sea salt, some cracked pepper, get that bad boy turning. Uh, 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 uh. Took it down, and then with the pork, after three and a half hours, I just pulled it apart. So it was like, pull pork? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I threw that on rolls that I bought, and I bought super sharp, like, smelly, stinky cheese. <laughs> so you get a roll. You get this sharp provolone, aged sharp provolone, expensive, has to cost money. You throw it on the roll. You throw some pesto spread that my father-in-law makes. It's like... Um, sharp provolone, pepper, artichoke, like it's a whole bunch of different stuff, and it's like into a paste, like a red paste, and it's like got crushed red pepper in it. Oh yeah, some, a little bit of everything in it. It's a pesto, and then you throw down that broccoli rob and that pulled pork. You just freaking squeeze that sandwich. You put that bad boy in your mouth, man. <laughs> You're gonna taste something. It's like boom. If I did it different. I cook it a little longer, a little slower, and marinate it overnight. But I forgot I have a Flyers game to go to tomorrow, so I had to do it tonight. And I would have blanched broccoli rob. Wow. It's interesting. Right? Yeah. Anyway, I did it. I'm Italian, so now I'm like super Italian. Hey, forget about it. Mario is me, Luigi. You know? So would you say that your woman cooks more than you do? Mm. And cooks Italian more than you do, definitely. She cooks better than me, I guess. And uh I cook two nights a week. She probably cooks three nights a week. And her sister cooks like a night or two a week. Hmm. It's interesting. So it's like a nice split. Yeah. Ever since I was little, I've always liked uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you know this part about me. I don't. So like, well, maybe. I was just watched this Asian guy called uh, Yan. And his Yan can cook. And uh -huh. my parents always used to say Dan can cook. So they would encourage it. But, like, even now, I cook for my wife, and I usually make maybe, like, three or four meals a week, and she makes maybe one. Mm -hmm. and, Are you the better? Uh, it depends, because I keep changing the recipes until they're, like, you know, I could, they're bad, and I don't remember what was good, so I go back to what I thought was good, but it's actually not what the recipe was. So it's, yeah, it yeah, oscillates gotta, a lot. Go off, you go off the beaten path, I understand. Yeah. You beat you, off the path. Yeah, I beat off the path. path. So, uh... Yeah, she doesn't necessarily like what I make because her tastes change a lot wildly. So it's her fault. Yeah, it definitely mm. is because it's delicious. Hmm, interesting. Uh, you ever make any um, pulled pork, broccoli rob, dude? No, I mean, I'm going to get your recipe on that one. Okay. Well, I don't have a recipe. I could not duplicate it. I just winked <laughs> it. That's exactly how I am. Yeah, I like that though. I decided to combine different recipes for different things. Yeah, that's what I do. Com oh. Combination recipe. I should, have, huh, I should yeah. have just stuck with one. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's the way to go. Man. I mean, you know, dames can't cook anymore. I'm sorry. Like, wait, hold on. Women, turn off the podcast. Women, this is... Turn Serious off the podcast. Here. Guy talk. Dames can't cook no more. They belong in the job place. Excuse my language. <laughs> Stay out of the kitchen. <laughs> Get back in the job place get in and desk. order me and, and get me enough money to buy a sandwich. Is that the offensive thing to say? <laughs> please. Here are the we please pay love. for my sandwich. Yeah, please. <laughs> Things are changing, man, with women and men and jobs in the workplace. Oh, we need to, we're going to do an episode about women. I know, they we're going to and probably get, in. it's the only one that's going to get us in trouble and it's not going to be with the public. Now back to our topic. <laughs> back on the topic. Peak human. I do... Want to hear something interesting? Sure. The Daily Mail, it's a UK paper that literally publishes garbage, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Daily. Anything they publish, they just want clicks, hits, they're sensational. It's like our version of that joke. Taps, squeezes. Mm -hmm. 
in 2007, they did an article how um, we've already peaked as humans. Oh, and as a whole? Oh, as a whole, yes. This oh, is this shit. is my last. Oh, this is the last the thing I got into. Revolution. Close. Um, the year 3000, we're going to split into two subspecies. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, I, I, I are we, we going to be on top or are we going to be below? Who's the... I think we're in, we're in the first group. Yes. The first group will be taller. They will be more beautiful, fairer oh, of skin. Thank you. Sound a little racy. Yeah, it is a little... They will live to... Hold on, this is 2007, so, and this is the Daily Mail. I don't condone them. From 10 years ago. Most of those people will live to be 120 years old. That right? sounds good to me. Quote, unquote, in the article, they will have deeper voices and bigger penises. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know which group you want to be in, right? Listen. The other group will be ugly and goblin-like, weaker with worse immune systems uh. because of their reliance on technology. Wow. So technology will weaken them. The other people are very natural still. They don't adhere to the computers and the internet, and they don't uh, do video blogs. Yeah. Anyway, um, in 2000, looking at it right now as a, a major in English, I'll say he just described Lord of the Rings, elves, and dwarves. <laughs> so thank, thank you, Daily certainly Mail. Certainly I mean, did. really, that's literally what they did. They were like, it will be fair, uh, Legolos, and, <laughs> and beautiful, and lived to 120, <laughs> and I just, just, whatever. And then the other people will be ugly and goblin-like, so dwarves. They will probably, what, live underground and carry axes? I mean, really. Or, or just the goblins. Or they could just be goblins, you're right, because elves and goblins go against yeah. each other. Oh, but the goes. goblins don't rely on technology. It's a There are many uh, fantasy movies that rely on technology right. to prove. What about Avatar, kind of? The humans? I guess the humans not are portrayed as weak, right? Cause the, uh, and they're, they're only six foot tall, the other, the blue, Navi, or Navi, 12 yeah. foot tall, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a, they're more uh, natural. Oh, natural. <laughs> <laughs> and we all can acknowledge that, that is just Pocahontas told, right, in space, right? I actually watched Pocahontas to see about the wind or something. You are uh -huh. the color Wait. of the wind. Right. And she's blowing the wind and the little wishy things. She's dating, like, her dad's the tribe leader, and she's dating the other creature. Yeah, the like, white, that seems... the white man who came as the a white man, quite literally. What? Take down their trees and nature? Like, that's Pocahontas. That's all it is. It's Pocahontas to a T. That's a ripoff, yeah. It definitely is. A big old ripoff. <laughs> oh, Jim anyway. So let's go uh, peak human here. Peak human. <clears throat> peak human. <clears throat> let me see if I can get this out of my throat. For the record, you keep getting fuzzy. I don't know if it's appearing on yours. But... I saw there was a notification, but it doesn't matter. I got it. So there's a... Uh, I got it. I fixed the internet, guys. I fixed it. <clears throat> I clipped its uh, vestibules. Vestibules? Yeah. Wow, we talking about fruit flies now? Yeah. So, um, ooh, mm -hmm. you talked about this a little bit with uh, processing speed. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a decline at twenty, and then mm -hmm. it, uh, so that that's like quickness of re of thinking is is pretty much gone. I mean, it declines oh, at 20, and he just paid off. And wait, did you do any real research? Um, what does the decline look like? Like, is it 12 nanoseconds to 14 nanoseconds, or is it like you reacted in 8 seconds, and now it's 8 minutes? <laughs> like, it's like a slow, no, it's a slow fade. It's very it's a slow, it's, slow fade. And how slow? Like, this does make a difference. If the slow fade is like, okay, interesting, good. Uh, all you young f bombs can go suck my <laughs> yeah. older D. That's all I'm saying. But guys, sorry, I apologize. Yeah, that's all right. And then uh, short term memory declines at 40, so you have some time. And long term memory declines at 50. That's like a 10. You get 10 years. You of, get a lot of time. Hmm. And then that's worldly a lot of time. knowledge. Worldly knowledge flattens at at 50. <laughs> so you're talking about uh, vocabulary at 70. Yeah, that's, that's why. just work. Yes. It just hmm. stays stays flat until you start to actually die. So when do you actually start to die? I think it depends on the person, but I think it's what average age is seventy two or eighty something. 
Weird. Somewhere in that range. Is that average age of death or average age of decline to death, would you say? I think death is like 80. Interesting. But well, that's pushing out. Across the more. world? Is that the world? Or United States? I feel like that's the U.S. I feel like level, that might be the United States. It might be like a not third world. Anybody with health care and ability to fix problems. Not cancer. So, um, while we were discussing United Kingdom papers and articles, huh? we, we love to do that here. I found an article on the independent dot co dot uk this one's from 2012 i think i read this the author claims that uh we reached peak human ten thousand years ago mm. and ever since we've been on the decline that's bullshit hold on <laughs> so he claims that um every generation roughly 15 to 25 years it's not figured out um there are 25 to 65 mutations that happen to your DNA, and that get passed along. It's pretty uh -huh. uniform. But there are way more than that, but 25 to 65 usually get passed along with every generation. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't need to. We don't need the smarts and the wherewithal that we had when we were hunter gatherers 10,000 years ago. In fact, he has a list of man as he sees fit and how it went. Hunter gatherer was very good. They were intelligent. They moved around. They had to think on their feet. Their Necessity. their lives. Right, and their lives depended on them being fairly intelligent and physically capable. The next phase, which he says is peak, peak, peak human, was the Athenian man. Around the time of Rome, Greece, you literally were at your philosophical peak as humans. The next phase he regarded, probably in the next last 50 years, couch potato man. Doesn't sound, <laughs> doesn't sound very flattering, but, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah, thanks. Well... He claims the next group, which is coming, he wrote this in 2012, is coming now. It's called the iPod, iPad Man. And they're they're even lazier than the couch potato because they do lots of stuff from sitting on their couch and just wave, wiping their finger, and, you know, directing traffic and buying things. And they're, they're using their brain but not quite in sync with their bodies. And it's just very, in another thousand or so years, it's just going to be like toilet human. Hmm. I mean... And I, I disagree with it, but could there have been a peak human? And if there was, and you played the odds, it wouldn't be now. It would either be in the past, the present, or now. Well, let's say there was a peak human. Past, present, or now. Where would you put your money that it was? You think it's right now? You think it will be in, like, a thousand years? I think the, problem think it already is, the problem is that you're thinking about the average human. So if the human has... If the human... If we mm -hmm. have enough free time to do what we like, then there mm -hmm. will be some people who actually have the drive to be physically able, mentally able, and then probably reach areas that are just impossible because of lack of knowledge in the past. So, I agree. Now, isn't that called, uh, not ladder theory, but the people a thousand years ago didn't have the knowledge we do now, so they had to discover their things. And now we have that knowledge, so we use that to build on top of that. Like, you're, you're constantly reaching up. Yeah, civilization. Well, sure. That's okay, fancy pants. <laughs> would, um, would you say invention has slowed down in the past hundred years? I don't know. Because I think there's like a, there's a physics-based like invention of things. And like mm -hmm. that, that might be slowing down, but there's like a human yeah. building on top of human mm -hmm. invention that is exploding. You know, there's so many things that are human based now and not physics based that you would never that were, have predicted. So is the advances in blog culture and video blogs like ours, like, is that really the next step in human? I would say it's more like programming and ways to program okay. and how to automate things and then intelligence, artificial intelligence. Huh. Which is more human based, right? Because it's not right. It's it's based on our intelligence. It's not anyone else's, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Hmm. Oh, you want to go somewhere with that? I do want to go to like career wise. Like, when are you valued okay. the most as a human being? Forty? I don't. Know. I don't know. That is actually when it plateaus. And the actual number. Forty. Yeah, forty. I got time, and it, brother. It breaks down to like people who are uh, high school educated. Uh, you know, higher oh, levels, associates, right. bachelors, masters, PhD. Mm -hmm. 
So most of the people who have the lower education, it kind of peaks and then spades. Mm-hmm. If you have a bachelor's, it kind of stays the same, 40 and on. Or if you're higher, like the top 10% educated, it actually spikes later on in life at 50. Hmm. I guess because you can do things mentally or writing-wise or research-wise after you're 40 and 50. Because physically, obviously, if you do a physical trait, you can't do that over 40 and 50 because you're physically not as yeah. capable as you are. Yeah. But mentally, you're still pretty with it. Mentally, you you're capable. And I think mm-hmm. this society needs to pay you back for the time you spent learning. So if you learn they until should. you're 30 and you're like a surgeon, like your your peak should probably be when you're 50 so you can make your money back and be you know, well-regarded, not retired at 40-something. Hmm. Interesting, Dan. <sighs> so what about a sexual peak, which is what we haven't touched on at all? <laughs> I saw that. Well, I feel like that's almost common knowledge. The younger you are, the more you can rev it up. I don't, I don't know. Blatantly sexual you are. Yeah. I mean, w- what is it for men and women? I, I saw it. I, I didn't, and it seemed. I didn't surprise me. I wasn't like, it's, wow, seventy three for men. <laughs> they said that there's testosterone which peaks at a certain time, but it doesn't really correlate to sexuality. Okay. Because sexuality for women is more uh, mental, more uh, psychological. Oh, interesting. So, so what's the women want? What's the women's number? Most of the women's number is like from 28 to like mid-30s or even to yeah, 40s. Yeah. Um, they're... Anyone in that area, DM us. Yeah, yeah. Hit us in the comments below if you're in that age group. Just, just, com. Please. Down below. Click here. Click hard. So we click back. It's interesting. It's an interesting age It is range. interesting. And for men, they said, you know, if you're 18, you could probably much, you know, physically, you're capable of going and going. Plowing. And going. It said plowing. Didn't yeah. It? Pretty sure it did. <laughs> it said plow away. Refractory period is minimized at 18 while <laughs> being elongated. Whoa. <laughs> and, oh, uh, folks. So the, the peaks were all over the place for the men's sexuality, too. It was like 18 to 30. And you would assume it'd be there because, you know, you're trying to make babies at that time period. True. Makes sense. Hmm. But the problem is that you're trying... Wait, how did they... How how do you measure all these things that we're talking about, I guess? I guess you could measure testosterone, which is how you must do it. Right. But then we just discussed that isn't 100% how it works. Yeah. Or you're relying on surveys on how often you have sex. (laughs) Right. And that's that's as as believable as we can believe. factor four from American High. Yeah. Well... What's interesting is that people that would lie the most are 18 to 19 to 20. Yeah. I've had sex with 30,000 like women. 700 women a day. <laughs> oh, that'd be hmm. so painful. Um, real quick. Um, not the sidebar, but it's it's romance related. Oh, boy. Listener of the podcast, The Hooge, oh, Dan yeah. from grade school. Did he already peak? Did anybody feel his peak? I bet not. Well, um, he went, wait, this is still a crazy story. I probably shouldn't tell it, but I will. He went to grade school prom with one of the cuter girls that was in our school. Really? Nicole. Wow. Nicole. Oh, Nicole. Well, anyway, um, he really messed up. <laughs> he screwed up. I, I don't even want to get into what happened to him, but uh, it, it ended badly. She doesn't want to talk to him anymore. It's He's in the ER. I'm not going to get into it. This is just two years ago, so it's been 10, 15 years. He finds out she lives in Florida. Oh. He's got a friend in Florida. So he gets this guy to stalk her on Facebook and, like, start listening to her conversations. And hold on. He says, nah, nah, she disappeared. He says, that's weird. You were telling me all this stuff about her every day. She's got a boyfriend who's handicapped. I don't know. It's real weird. That guy fell in love with her. Oh no! He stole her. Hey, it's it's what I think. That's what I think he's been doing. I think the dude just listens to movies and pretends they're real life. Because I don't know that this really happened. Um, because then he told me he fell in love with her, the guy, and then he said that he's she's dating a guy who's handicapped and is an architect. And I said, Dan, oh, no. 
He said, Dan, this sounds exactly like the movie Something, Something About, about Mary. Mary. That's what I said. And he said, no, dude, that's the most ridiculous shit I ever heard. And I said, I oh, you mentioned it. What happened at prom? He said, you don't remember? My zipper got caught? And I said, Dan, this didn't even happen. So I don't know what's going on with um, Dildan69, but <laughs> shout out for all your dating issues or whatever. He's thinking of moving to Florida. He mentioned great. Brett Favre in a sentence. I don't know. I'm worried about him. Huh. And, and Yeah, exactly. Like some, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, you gotta, you gotta pump the brakes, bro. Something's wrong. Shout out. Thanks for listening to the podcast, though. Yeah, we appreciate it. We're going to get them on one day. We're going to disparage all this, air all the grievances. Clear it out. Because we'll he's going to go through every scenario that we talked about. <laughs> yeah, we're going to break them all down. <laughs> huh? Oh, so, yeah. We'll see. We from the Unpanders like to thank you. We well, would. Oh, hold on. Um, real quick. I saw a comment the other day. I want to oh, address it. Really? So... Yeah, cover your ears. This is a curse word, but I, I have to read it because it's part of the, an actual comment. Okay. It's just from AK Fuck Nasty Seven. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, I hope he's not. I saying. may have pronounced it wrong. I hope I hope I pronounced it wrong. It's inappropriate. Who can that? He he commented under um, the video. Uh, Get rich or die trying. Huh. You both eat shit. I hope this is a real comment. I didn't see this one. Well, it just said you both eat shit, but. Nice. The shit was a dollar something. I appreciate yes. that, but thank you. So, thanks, AK. Nasty. Huh. And we don't. We don't here at Dan Panders. No. We do want to thank you for listening. Um, we want to say that to everybody, though, I guess. Right, Dan? Yeah, pretty much everybody, except for Fuck Nasty. Well, I still want to thank him <laughs> for following, too. And hold on, I got to... I realized I'm sponsoring an NHL team a little too much. Oh, I'm gonna take this off. We're just gonna wear. Oh, oh well, yeah. Regular old shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna wear this tomorrow too, folks. Huh. So. I really hope he commented. <clears throat> Look him up. You wanna fight him? I'll fight the guy in the parking lot. I don't even care. <laughs> Equal Hold on. Cuffs. Someone really hates the podcast, let's say. They're a real jerk. They're saying all sorts of big, big time stuff. They want to fight you. They say they'll beat us up. You go to meet them in person and they're 13. What do you do? You win the fight. Yeah, you obviously. Win. I mean, yeah. you there's no question. You can't let some fight talk you. No, no. We're a strong, independent man. <laughs> yeah. podcast. And I may rely on you <laughs> to come in and tag team. <laughs> Listen, Nick. He's like five foot eleven and a half, <laughs> and really strong. Uh, well, I think that wraps it up tonight. Uh, we touched on a lot of things. I hope we touched on a lot of you and you, Nick, and you, folks. Oh, and you, Dan. folks. Yeah, we Thank we you. like you. We do like you, <laughs> guys. We like you. Oh. Uh, Thanks for coming tonight. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good night. You check out our socials, unpanders.com. We have other things, too. You can find them. We believe in your intelligence, unless you've passed your peak. <laughs> nice. Check it next time. That's it.